today's topic for discussion is radar. We are going to see all basic terms and all equations related with this radar and we will be seeing all the basic or the important concepts. Okay, so radar is a device which is used for actually detecting the presence of some uh, target or some object in a distant location. So it is actually used uh, in navigation systems likewise. Okay, so uh, what is the principle of radar? In uh, radar, the principle used is sound wave reflection. Here, uh, what is happening is that first the radar, this is the basic structure of a radar, it will be sending some pulses and uh, it will this send pulse will be hitting on the target and this target will uh, it will return some echo so this radar will again receive this echo and the time difference between this send pulse and the received echo will be calculated to actually find the distance of this target that is how far the uh, target is located in order to detect that this information is used that is the time difference between the send and the receive send pulse and the received echo Okay, so this principle is actually the basic principle of calculating the distance of a target in a radar. And this is the basic structure of a radar system. It will be having a transmitter and it is having a receiver since it is sending some pulse also and it is also receiving some echo, right? So there is a transmitter and a receiver. There is a duplexer which will be sending and receiving the signals and there is an antenna. Okay, and there will be a distant target which we actually want to detect. So this is a basic, very basic structure of a radar. And as I said, uh, this radar systems are working based on the principle of wave reflection or more precisely sound wave reflection. Now we are going to see some basic terms associated with this radar system, which are pulse repetition frequency, pulse repetition time, rest time, duty cycle, etc. Okay, so the uh, first thing we are going to see is pulse repetition time. That is how uh, frequently the pulses are being sent. That is called pulse repetition time. This is a first pulse send. This is a second pulse. And how, uh, what is the difference, time difference between the sending of the first pulse and the second pulse? It is called pulse repetition time. And if you take the 1 by, that is uh, the inverse of this pulse repetition time, you will be getting pulse repetition frequency or pulse repetition rate or the rate of sending of this pulses by the radar system. Okay. Now, 1 by PRT is... PRF. This is PRF. I've written it here. Okay. So the pulse repetition frequency or you can say it is pulse repetition rate. It is a number of pulses sent per unit time. How frequently the pulses are being sent by this radar. So in order to uh, actually detect the presence of a target, we just uh, not only require single pulse, we require more than one pulses, right? So we will be sending more than one pulses and how often we are sending these pulses is called pulse repetition frequency or rate. So we can say PRF is equal to 1 by PRT. Okay, so I hope this concept of PRT and PRF is clear. Next we are going to see rest time. Now what is the rest time? See, consider that in order to detect this target, this is a target, okay. In order to de detect this target, the radar has first sent a pulse and received an echo. And again, it is... Uh, wanting to send uh, some pulse and it is sending that pulse and uh, every time this uh, radar is sending new new pulses it will rest for some time to actually receive the echo of the current send pulse right so there sh should be some resting time for the radar where the radar is waiting for the echo from the target Okay, so that time is called a rest time. Otherwise, what happens is that if the uh, pulses are being sent in a fast manner, it will not be able to detect which is the echo of, that is, uh, which echo corresponds to the send pulse. Okay, so in order to detect correctly, that is, it has to wait. After sending a pulse, it has to wait for some time to receive that, receive the echo of that particular Pulse. Otherwise, there will be an ambiguity between the echoes received. These echoes can be from various pulses if the pulses are sent in a simultaneous manner in a fast manner. Okay, So, that time is called rest time where, I hope the concept is clear, where, where the target is waiting for, waiting to receive an echo from a target of the current send pulse. Okay, now we are going to see what is duty cycle. Okay. 
ut cycle is actually equal to pulse width by pulse repetition frequency why this term is been included because uh, you will be have to uh, solve problems based on this equation so please note this equations ut cycle is equal to you can use either this equation or this one pulse width by pulse repetition time or pulse width into pulse repetition frequency okay so that is called a duty cycle of a radar next we are going to see about the maximum range of the radar see this is the distance uh, that is a maximum distance within which the radar can detect a target within uh, this distance if the target is present only then the radar can detect the presence of that target by uh, sending of pulses and receiving of echo method okay so that is the r max or maximum range of a radar it is equal to pt into g sigma a e by 4 pi square into s minimum the whole raised to 1 by 4 where pt is the transmitted power g is the gain of the transmitter antenna sigma is the radar cross section of the target that means the area of the uh, target with uh, where, which the radar can actually detect it is in meter square a e is the effective antenna aperture or the effective uh, area of the uh, antenna of the receiving antenna then 4 pi square into s minimum is a minimum detectable power the whole raised to 1 by 4 where gain can be represented in terms uh, of again antenna aperture and wavelength which is equal to 4 pi a e a here a and e is together okay a e lambda square and from this we will get that r max is actually proportional to pt the whole raised to 1 by 4 where pt is a transmitted power now the effect of noise on the range okay what is the effect of noise uh, how it is uh, modifying the range equation now r max will be equal to pt a square sigma by 4 pi lambda square the whole square into f minus uh, 1 into k t0 b into g here uh, f is the noise figure of the receiver please note down the various terms t0 is a standard ambient temperature which is 290 kelvin for standard then b is the bandwidth k is boltzmann's constant we know that uh, mostly if you use this k, k it, it will be boltzmann's constant g is the uh, yeah g is the gain okay so these are the various terms i hope it is clear f is the noise figure k is the uh, boltzmann's constant t0 is the standard ambient temperature b is the bandwidth now this term three terms together k t0 b is contributing noise input power of the receiver now if you write i have told that a is the antenna area a in terms of the diameter sometimes the question will be uh, re relating to the diameter changes or variations how the range is going to affect such questions can come so a is equal to 0 0.65 pi d square by 4 now if you substitute this in the above equation you can modify the range like this r max is equal to 48 pt d raised to 4 sigma b lambda square f minus 1 into km so this km will be the remaining terms together put as a constant okay now here uh, from this relation you can write that see there is a d raised to 4 here there is 1 by 4 outside so you can write r max please note this relation also r max is directly proportional to the antenna diameter okay sometimes the question can also come if the antenna diameter is varied by this how is the range varied or how the range is changed so r max is proportional to diameter of the antenna now in terms of the distance uh, between the transmitter and the uh, receiver how the range is varying so the range is equal to delta t by 12.36 miles where delta t is the uh, time this is the time okay the time uh, from the transmitter to receiver in microseconds now yeah, I have written it here. Delta T is the time between the transmitter and the receiver in microseconds it is. Okay. It is in microseconds. Now for shorter ra ranges of the radar, it is varying like this. Range is equal to 328 delta T by 2 or it is equal to 164 delta T yards. The most important equation is this. But if the time is given, 
you can use this equation. If the time between transmitter and receiver is given, you can use this equation. Next, we are going to see about maximum unambiguous range. We are going to discuss this maximum unambiguous range. Maximum unambiguous range is uh, the range detected by the radar or the range possible for any radar uh, such that this range is corresponding to the most recent transmitted pulse. So, as I said, in order to detect a single target, uh, a radar can send more than one pulses. Okay. And if the most uh, recent received echo is from the most recent transmitted pulse, then only that uh, echo is valid, right? See, if there is a radar here and the radar is sending various pulses, okay? And it is receiving various echoes. And if this most recent echo is from the most recent transmitted pulse, if the radar can validate this thing, then the range is called the maximum unambiguous range when means that is uh, that is there is no ambiguity between the the sent pulse and the received echo it is it is correctly received for one corresponding pulse it is correctly receiving its echo itself if there is no ambiguity in that thing then it is called maximum unambiguous range that is without any ambiguity it can detect and send uh, that is it can send pulses and detect echoes means that range is called maximum unambiguous range and it is given by mur is equal to pulse repetition time by 12.2 miles okay the next topic that we are going to see is blind speed before uh, going into see the blind speed how can we actually uh, or practically increase the range of radar the range can be practically increased if you see the equation also you can see that uh, in the numerator there is a term called antenna aperture if you increase the antenna aperture or gain of the antenna we can practically increase the range of the radar that that is a practical method now let us see the next topic which is blind speed blind speed means uh, sometimes uh, even though the target is moving it may appear stationary or it may go undetectable by the radar such a speed of movement of the target is called blind speed. That is, even though the target is moving, it may appear stationary. Uh, and the speed at which the target is not actually visible to the radar. Okay. So, that speed is called blind speed. Now, how it is happening is actually because of the Doppler shift. We are going to see the Doppler shift nextly. But just know that it is actually due to the Doppler shift which is happening due to the movement of the target. So, the target is actually moving with a uniform speed and uh, whenever the successive pulses are being uh, or successive echoes are coming from the target, it each every time the pulses is coming, it will have a phase shift of 2 pi. So, so since the uh, phase shift is um, 2 pi, it may appear that the, uh, the target is sending the, uh, the pulses from the same location. Okay, so phase change of 2 pi will be same. So, the target may appear stationary even though it is moving at a uh, uniform speed. So, this speed is called blind speed and it is given by VB is equal to lambda by 2 PRT where lambda is the wavelength and PRT is the pulse repetition time and this speed is called blind speed. Next topic we are going to see is Doppler effect. Doppler effect is happening whenever uh, the source or the receiver uh, that means the target or the radar is moving with respect to each other. So, there is a relative motion happening between the target uh, or radar. Okay. So, uh, if this is happening, then the Doppler effect is happening. So, or in general, we can say when there is a source and there is a transmitter or a receiver. Consider that there is a source and a receiver. And uh, these two source and receiver are communicating with each other. And when uh, there is a relative movement happening between the source and receiver, there will be a frequency change happening uh, between them. So, that is called generally Doppler effect. Okay. So, uh, the Doppler frequency F is equal to F0 which is the original frequency by 1 minus VSR which is a relative source to res uh, receiver speed by C. C is a speed of light. Okay. Now, VSR is equal to Vs minus Vr, where Vs is a source speed, Vr is a receiver speed. So, this is a general concept of Doppler shift or Doppler frequency. Now, the Doppler shift is given by delta F. This is Doppler frequency. Now, Doppler shift is given by Vsr by lambda, 
where VSR is the relative speed. So when due to this relative motion, the frequency uh, variations actually happen due to this relative motion. That is called, uh, even though it is uh, sending actually in some frequency due to the speed or this uh, motion, the uh, frequency may change. The, that change in frequency is called Doppler effect. Okay. So delta F is a Doppler shift. It is given by VSR by lambda, which is the wavelength. VSR is equal to Vs minus Vr. Now consider uh, for the case of a, a radar system, there is a radar, there is a target. Now this target or uh, uh, yeah, there is a target. This target is actually moving with respect to this radar. Now what is the Doppler frequency in this case? Fd is equal to 2 Vr by lambda hertz will be the Doppler frequency. Now Vr is a relative velocity of target with respect to radar. In the case of radar and a target in, in such a system, most probably the target can move, radar will be stationary, most probably, okay. So, due to the relative motion of this uh, target with respect to radar, some velocity will be created, that is Vr. Now, we, the Doppler frequency will be Fd is equal to 2 Vr by lambda. Now, Vr, you can write here, this is the V and you can write Vr as V cos theta. So, Vr, you can write it as Vr is equal to V cos theta theta and theta will be the angle in which this uh, target is actually moving in this direction okay uh, so fd is equal to 2v cos theta by lambda you can replace by this equation and when theta theta is the angle of moment so theta when theta is 0 degree it is a maximum doppler frequency happening which is 2v by lambda and when theta is equal to 90 degree then the Doppler frequency will be minimum, which is Fd minimum. That will be equal to 0. So, this is the concept of Doppler frequency. So, in this video, we have discussed about what is actually a radar, what is its principal basic block diagram, uh, the pulse repetition time, pulse repetition frequency, duty cycle. And we have seen about the range, various range equations in terms of diameter, in terms of uh, the noise figure, in terms of general uh, terms. Uh, that is maximum range, maximum unambiguous range and also how the, uh, the range is related with the time difference between the transmitter and the receiver, how it is related and what is blind speed and also we have seen about the Doppler effect. So these are the major topics uh, that you have to cover when you are uh, preparing the radar subject and I hope that we have covered all of those subjects or topics in this video. So if you found this video useful, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you will be uh, making use of this video because this is a very important topic when going for any competitive examination. So please um, do share this video and if you found it useful, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.